Does it make any sense to swing backwards? I'm here today with Dr. Tyler Stanford, and we're going to see, is this something that can help you increase your club speed? Driver speed, so six and a half miles per hour, which if you're talking six and a half miles per hour, we might be in the realm of 20, 25 yards. All right, Dr. Stanford does a lot of speed training work with Speedstick, mm -hmm. right? You're a consultant with them. You've done a lot of work with people telling them to swing backwards. Yeah. Right. Um, why would you, is there any results and kind of what's the theory associated with that? Yeah. So I'm not the first person to come up with this theory, right? So this has been around for a little bit and, and the Titleist Performance Institute talks about the importance of, of training your non-dominant side. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically what that means is if I'm a right-handed golfer, there's times that I'm going to swing a club left-handed really quickly in order to kind of train the body to sequence things appropriately throughout the golf swing. So uh, I've been doing some consulting with Super Speed Golf, and they have every part of their training protocols have non-dominant swings, these left-handed swings. And players will ask me a lot, and this feels awkward, do I need to be doing this, how important is it? And we got a lot of people that were asking us that question kind of out in the golf biomechanics world, Okay. right? Um, so I thought, hey, the best way to do it is to just collect some data. So I grabbed uh, a set of 10 golfers. Uh, they were all right-handed players, and I took them through Super Speed training, uh, it was five weeks of training, and um, they never once took a right-handed swing, ever. It was all just left-handed. So, so, so super speed training, for those who may not uh -huh. be familiar, it's not, a, it's not an actual golf club. You're yep. not hitting a ball, yep. right? You've got some different weighted sticks, yep. and you do a golf swing basically fast. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's kind of the stimulus we give, like move this club really fast. We don't want to give any instructions or get people thinking too much because what we want them to do is figure out what their body has to do to generate speed. Okay. That's the idea. And so you ask them, your right-handed player, only do it left-handed. Yeah, only do it left-handed. Sounds crazy. Yeah, okay. and, and they thought it was crazy too, right? So they did it, they were great with it, and they're making these fast swings left-handed. Uh, it was about 45 minutes a week of training. Okay. Brought them back in. I had the benefit of looking at the way they're producing ground reaction forces and their club speeds. So okay. just kind of some of the basic results after these six weeks of training. So club speed went up six and a half miles per hour for these golfers. So that okay. averaged about 6%. This for a driver speed. This is for a driver, yeah. For, yep. Driver, yep. Okay. for driver speed. So six and a half miles per hour, which if you're talking six and a half miles per hour, we might be in the realm of 20, 25 yards for these players. I mean, this yeah. is a big change in six weeks. Yeah. But what was cool about it is looking at the ground reaction forces. So those forces are important to the golf swing, the forces that kind of move you up and kind of create those rotations. Right. Those all increase by in the kind of in the realm of 12 to 15%, except for one. Uh, this one force that points away from the target. So as I start to kind of swing down, this force is going to almost allow me to kind of initiate that rotation. Okay. That force went up 30% as a result of the study. So <laughs> it sounds crazy, but if, but if I can go through a process and get, you know, 15, 20 yards, that might be one or two clubs different oh, yeah. with my driver. And it's just through, I mean, through what mechanism? So what's, yeah. what's your theory in yeah. terms of, okay, so I do this, I do this protocol, I do left-handed only swings, but in theory, you know, the, what's your theory in terms of why does yeah. it actually let you move faster? Yeah, why did it work? And I, and I have two theories. One of them is something that other people have talked about, which is this idea of, they call it the big break theory. This is something that Tom House and the Titleist Performance Institute talk okay. about a lot. And it's basically this idea that as we start transferring energy through the body, if I'm going to change, kind of send energy from the ground to my pelvis, to my trunk, out to the arms, those segments kind of have to slow down a little bit in order to transfer that energy out. Meaning as I start initiating that swing and I, my pelvis starts firing and then I want my trunk to fire, well, that trunk firing is going to kind of slow down the pelvis a little bit. And mm -hmm. so if it can't slow down, we're not going to transfer that. So that, that's kind of one theory. It's just better sequencing of the body, better control of the body, okay. and that can work with non-dominant swings. Another theory, which there's a lot of research in this in a lot of other fields, where what they do is put all these electrodes on the brain, have them do tasks right-handed and left-handed, and then look at what areas of the brain get activated, and every single study will tell you that different areas of the brain will get activated if I'm doing a task right-handed or if I'm doing it left-handed. And so when we're doing speed training, we're really focusing training our brain. And so what better way to train the brain than to activate that even more? Okay. And non-dominant training is a great way to activate the brain more. So it sounds like it's not so much, it's 
that it's muscular training, it's brain training. Yep. The area of the brain that controls this, you're giving it exercise, so to speak. For sure. And so it can speed up, it's got more efficient pathways. Yeah. And then when you go back to right-handed, the brain can can sequence those signals yeah. a little faster. It's almost like it's almost like taking a left-handed swing if you're right-handed is like loading more plates on your bench press, okay. but for your brain, if for that makes brain. sense. Yeah, right? It does make sense. So if you found this video interesting, please give us a like and subscribe. And we've put a link in the description that will reference a study that Dr. Standiford worked on where you can read about this in more detail.